The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the raw and uncensored Ambitious Podcast. I'm your host, the original HBIC, Katie Boyd. During our time here together, I will be instilling all of the strength, power, and determination you will need to use the very stones thrown at you to build your ultimate empire. We will redefine the word bitch from the derogatory to the acronym being in total control of herself. So let's adjust our crowns and prepare to live life ambitiously. Oh yeah, here I am, the original HBIC, Katie motherfucking Boyd. <laughs> Deck the halls with hairy balls. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> Today's episode is all about why I loathe the holidays. Top ten reasons, and if you do too, what to do about it. Holiday schmala days. But before we chat, I want to read the iTunes review of the week. And it comes from Breathing in Light. And she says, Katie is inspiring. She is a no holds bar kind of podcaster. She lives her life in great peace and spreads that wherever she goes. She is inspiring not only to women, but men as well. She holds nothing back when telling you the truths you try to ignore in your life. She dives into each show with gusto and always opens with a quote. I'm not doing that today, but shit, I'm sorry to disappoint you. (laughs) The topics she discusses are what we want to hear and need to hear. Sometimes in life, we hide our true feelings and push things aside that we may not think matter, but Katie brings them to light and helps you deal with them. She is about the mind, body, and soul as a whole. She wants to leave you with your head in a spin and your panties in a bunch so you actually take a good hard look at yourself and be the best you can be. I love listening every week. Keep rocking, Katie. Thank you so much. Email me at Club at gmail.com to receive your $100 gift certificate. And you can use that towards anything KBMSC related. So every week I go through this whole thing and I talk about my six uh, deal makers or breakers, as you know. Mm-hmm. This is Matt. He's my husband. He's my co-host. <laughs> hey guys. He's my ride or die, biatch. <laughs> He's been a staple on the show for the last couple of weeks, and everyone keeps Thank like being like, back. Matt is so fun. Have Matt on. And then his head just gets bigger and bigger yes. and bigger. Yes. It's going to ex- fucking explode sooner or later. It's my show. But I don't really feel like going through the six deal makers or breakers. I'm so fucking sick of it. If you don't know what the hell they are by now, just go back to the first fucking podcast and educate Listen. your damn self. Yeah. God damn it. With fucking cherry on top. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> You're pumped up today. I'm really pumped up because Big this time. is literally like I'm bursting. You're bursting with energy. Ready because I loathe the holidays. Yes, I know you do. I but you. I want to get back to something. Will you stop interrupting me, goddammit? If okay, you're going to be on here, go you better just let me do my thing. Do your thing. Do your thing. I'll call on you when I'm ready. <laughs> just sit there and look pretty. I'll for call Christ on sakes. you because my ratings are going through the roof. Oh. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Ew. You know what? Just for that, you're not getting a hand job until th- oh, 2020. Jesus. Be, until 2020, I'll be... 2020. I'll be in a lot of pain. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, a lot of pain. pretty much, if you don't like what I have to say on this podcast, like I always say, go into a dark room, light a candle, put on some Billy Idol, and go fuck yourself. <laughs> Why would I? <laughs> That's all I have to say today. I want to just jump into this shit. That sounds good. Because I am so freaking ready to yep. just talk about this because this is one of my biggest issues. And it's something that I've struggled with for so many mm-hmm. years because I was roped into this like thought of the holidays are magical. And it's a time where family gets together and mm. they talk about the yesteryears and they like have these great times. And really... I think it's a bunch of fucking donkey shit. And I think I would rather <laughs> drink. you really feel. Well, I will. Uh, that's why I have an ambitious podcast. I'd rather drink urine as my beverage of choice for the rest of my life than celebrate the holidays. <laughs> and I mean that. And we're just going to get into it. Sounds this is going to be a two for today. So this is going to really get your panties wet. <laughs> so we're going to talk about this. I know you like to call me the Grinch. 
Yes, no, you're really not the Grinch, but, you know, I get it because we come from pretty much the similar backgrounds and holidays and the expectations of holidays. And what and, background is that, Matt, baby? You know, a crazy freaking background <laughs> as far as families and stuff like that. So it's kind of like you expect one way that holiday is going to be and it turns out to be a total different way. So, Absolutely. You know, now that we're, you know, very mature and we decide to do Speak what we want yourself. to. <laughs> we decide what we want to be able to do for, our, well, you know, a holiday. Right, because so. part of the ambitious movement is redefining the word bitch. Right. So if you're like, I don't want to do Thanksgiving this year because it, you know, is so much work and I just slave away in the kitchen all goddamn goddamn day and no one helps me Mm -hmm. redefining the word bitch to the acronym being in total control of her or himself right right so i'm like call me a bitch because i'm doing what i want to do and i'm living my best life and i'm not adhering to all of your rules that you've made regulations and regulations and and things that you've like passed down from generation to generation through your family of origin make believe bullshit it's all make believe -believe bullshit it's all make believe so let's get into our top 10 list let's do it all right so my number one you know, because I write the podcast and then you just come on here and pretend <laughs> that you help me. I do the cliff note version, right? It's like, oh, give me the story. Let me do my, my cliff notes, right? Matt's that asshole fourth grader that has like summer reading and then makes his parents take him to like Barnes and Noble to buy the goddamn cliff notes of goddamn men and my, of mice and men. Great, great book, by the way. Yes. Lene. Yeah, I yeah. was just stroking it. Um, so uh, number one, materialism. Mm-hmm. Buying things we cannot afford for people who don't even care, nor are most of them worth us buying shit for Mm -hmm. would you like to comment you know it's funny i grew up right and much like it was like always okay christmas is we have to run around and buy these things and my family didn't have much money and it's like now thinking back as a man you know a business guy and knowing all these different things i'm like you should have been buying stuff you should have a six-month emergency fund never mind going around buying crap and trying to be able to to do certain things and show love through gifts and we'd be running around playing with the fucking boxes afterwards right all the toys would be unwrapped and we'd be playing with the freaking boxes absolutely and it was such a waste of money but my parents did it every year and I think I was talking to you about this the other night you know my parents we didn't have much money at all I don't know how my parents even made it they gave everything to the kids nothing for themselves and every Christmas started when the holidays come it's like my, my mom would go oh Joe watch the car break down right before Christmas it always does and I'm like God almighty just talk manifest about that shit. right so now you're buying presents that you don't need for everybody that doesn't really need anything and no emergency fund no cash nothing like that right. using credit cards and things like that and you know it was it was always painful at the end of it right one year my mother Teresa Boyd allegedly bought me Three fucking fur capes for Christmas. <laughs> Faux fur capes. Why did I need three faux fur capes? And you know the bitch. Hi, Teresa. I know you're listening right now. But you know that she freaking bought that shit on credit cards. Because as you did, I yeah. grew up with not a lot. Right. You know, there were like really good years. And then there were like really slim years. Yeah, same and my us. mom would always try to like make every Christmas like amazing. Right. But the truth is, is like I as a child just wanted my parents to not fight and be loving towards each other and just enjoy being home from school vacation. I didn't really care about the material stuff. Right. But what happens is, is because society has brainwashed us to think that that's all we should care about. Then you have a bunch of spoiled brats running around who are so fucking entitled. Mm -hmm. And then those little entitled children just grow up to be adult entitled assholes. Yeah. So we're just pretty much swimming in a sea of a bunch of entitled assholes. Well, I think it's also, you have to make the stand and say, Hey, that's not how my life is going to be. That's not how I'm going to have my family be or the people that I'm around. And we were in the store the other day. We, we had a huge Halloween party about two weeks ago, which was awesome. And, you know, the, when we were looking for Halloween I like that stuff, holiday. That's the best holiday, right? It's not really a holiday, though. It's, it's, like like a pa- it's like a pagan holiday. It's no which expectations, I'm all right? Yeah. But, but the minute Halloween starts, that's it. You know, we were in the store and you're like, do you hear freaking Christmas music already? It's oh, like, it's like the 29th my. of October. God. And I'm like, oh, yeah, here we go. Here it starts, right? So it's almost like Pavlov's dog where you're being conditioned. Oh, here it is. We got to go buy. Oh, here it is. Make sure you're going to feel like shit if you don't buy all these things. And this person's buying this. And then the kids start talking about what they want. And the other kids. Do you remember you used to get the the Sears, the big Sears catalog? And I would take like a freaking marker (laughs) and I would be like snorting it, getting high and like circling all the shit that I wanted for Christmas. I was like, oh, yeah, I want that Bobby Dream house. It was the best catalog. Oh, my God. They were magical, weren't they? I used to sit there and just like think about all these things. And meanwhile, my parents were like, for God's sakes, we have 
no oil in the house. Yeah, <laughs> mine too. And I'm over there like this, circling my stuff. <laughs> well, you better get me these things anyway. Or I'll hate you. <laughs> right? It's yeah. so freaking true. But I didn't know any better. I was a little sleep. No one back did. Then. Yeah. So pretty much, stop buying shit on credit cards for people who really don't need these things anyways. Like, let's be honest. I know, like, practically every Christmas, and you know too, <laughs> I get like socks. <laughs> like all this shit that like you don't need. No. My mother would buy you like um, plaid flannel pajama pants. I actually like those flat pajama oh pants. Oh my god! I've kept the them ones for, that like, your fucking head of your years. dick always like comes out while you're walking around oh, the house. I'm like, why s- is your dick winking at me again? Like, <laughs> it's, it's, fucking it's, sew those it, up or throw it, them away. It comes with a slit, so easy access. So Ew. If, I, if I have to go quickly. I can go, and that's See, the end of it. See, he's right? talking about going like to the pee, pee and not having sex. This is like <laughs> uh, what's on his well, mind. Well, that's what it was built for. But you know, I don't when I have when I want sex, I don't. Who have wants pants. to have sex with someone with pants. their pants on? This is so strange. When I don't have sex. I don't have pants. We need on. to go into number two. I take them off. That's allegedly <laughs> um, food. <laughs> Food is number two. Mm-hmm. It's gross. It's so yeah. gross, okay? I'm so freaking sick of slaving away in the damn kitchen from like Thanksgiving to January 1st. And then it's just the food is not healthy. Like, let's be honest. Like, the healthiest part of Thanksgiving is probably the turkey because mm-hmm. it's high in protein. But other right. than that, it's like stuffing and mac and cheese and like 17 different pies. The way that my grandmother would do Thanksgiving, she would l- like blow it out of the water. And I'm like, who is going to eat this shit? And then for like two weeks, we would eat like leftovers for two weeks. Right. Was, she would be like, would you like some banana cream pie for dinner? I'm like, not r- particularly. And then the next day, it was like, would you like mint? meat pie because that was always the one that no one fucking ate because in our child heads we thought mince meat was actually meat in a pie and that freaked me the fuck out what is mince meat mince meat is like raisins and like something and like nuts it's fucking gross i mean she was from nova scotia so she was like this is a delicacy where i come from (laughs) i used to have to wear burlap shoes and walk 17 miles to school uphill in the snow i mean (laughs) those were like the stories i heard i used to have some delicacies too shit on the shingle (laughs) oh ew that's a (laughs) real thing yeah. Yes. Should be fun toast. Oh, Very good stuff. That's war food right no, there. But the food thing is is awful too because you know we're in the health industry and you know we get bombarded. Oh, you got to have a piece of pie. It's Thanksgiving. Oh, have another piece of pie. It's Christmas. Have another piece of pie. Christmas is in two weeks. Have another piece. Of pie. Now this right? is coming from the man that literally wants to eat at Ralphie's Cafe Italiano every fucking day. Well, that's my treat. He's that's like, we're in treat. the health industry. I'm like, have, an, have another serving of chicken time. <laughs> I love a good chicken pie. I know, I know you do. <laughs> But see what happens? Like you get so like, oh my God, I can't like, people are already talking about eating Thanksgiving food. I'm like, you fat motherfucker, get over yourself, right? And then what happens? You got to make a turkey soup. Then you got to make a turkey sandwich yep. and then turkey tetrazzini and all this shit. And then by Christmas happens, right? What happens? So, You're so grossed out yep. by eating. And sick. Now you have the flu. And it's like, oh, isn't it funny? The flu coincides with what? Two things. Two things the flu coincides with is the holidays when everyone's drinking way too much, eating way too much, eating unhealthy food. Matt, it's flu season. It's flu season. You dumbass. Flu season. It has nothing to do with the poison that you put in your body and your, your, your uh, what do you call it? Your immune system is, is going so down and you're getting low. more acidic. Right. Because of all the sugar and all the alcohol and all the gluten. So get over yourself and make new traditions. So for us, what we do on Thanksgiving is we go out to dinner. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be out to dinner like midday. And I will probably have just like some snacks in the house, like because Karina will come home with Juan Mm -hmm. and we'll just kind of hang out and like maybe watch some Netflix and just chill out. But I'm not going to wake up. Like I used to wake up at four o'clock in the morning to put the fucking turkey in and I would cook all day long. And the last time I actually hosted Thanksgiving dinner was an absolute fucking shit show. <laughs> so we, we thanks, haven't hosted one since. We like, haven't hosted one best since. Best thing that ever happened. Mike and Terry Boyd, I love you, but this is the damn truth. <laughs> on, on the night before Thanksgiving, I like made this whole fucking spread. And I had all these beautiful bottles of wine and cocktails and everything. And everyone just comes in and starts just shoving food down their face. Kristen's already getting nervous. <laughs> and then my dad literally like main lines a whole entire bottle of wine. <laughs> it was gone. So he's like three gone. sheets to the wind in like 2.8 minutes. <laughs> then I look at him at the, in the corner of my eye and he's got a magnum of vodka. And he starts yep. pouring it into a fucking wine glass. And I'm like. Mike, what are you doing? He's like, what the fuck does it look like I'm doing? I'm making sangria. And I'm like, bro, I don't know where the fuck you're from. That's how you make sangria. This is an hour in. Yeah, Not and then him and my minutes. mom got into a fucking screaming match. 
and everyone just keeps eating. And Karina was looking at us like, oh my God, thank you for being my parents. They're fucking crazy. And <laughs> so, I was like, no shit. That was like the best grateful attitude she ever had. Oh, She's totally. like looking around going, oh my God, I'm so lucky. Sometimes I have you have, and Matt. <laughs> sometimes like, you have to God. put people through pain to make their gratitude come out. <laughs> so my dad would like mouthed off to my mom. My mom starts getting upset. My dad looks at me and goes, I'm going to go upstairs and put my pajamas on. I'm like, you fucking do that, dude. He goes upstairs with his sangria. If you can't see me right now, I'm using my quotation fingers. He takes the wine glass, smashes it off my wall, walking up the stairs, pours the whole entire sangria onto his snow white Phil Donahue hair. Never comes back down. I wake up the next day. Dinner's on the table. Everybody fucking eats. Mike Boyd comes down. Fucking cotton candy hair. Pink, 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 pink. (laughs) <laughs> Didn't even take a shower. Didn't no. even know his hair was pink. Nope. Like, this is my fucking life, people. <laughs> and it's a, it's really fun. Nope. And the story is obviously hilarious. And everyone in here is like either biting their nails or pissing Ugh. themselves or laughing. But this is the truth. And guess what? I'm not afraid to say it because this is actually totally fucking normal. This is probably 98% of all of these gatherings, right? And, 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 it's, and it's funny because the expectations you have, this shit happens, right? And you still get in the loop because I used to do it over and over again. Oh, well, this year is going to be different. Oh, my family. Famous not last words. Happen. Well, this year they said it's going to be so much better. No. no still the holidays like trigger shit, man. Absolutely. The trigger shit. Oh. Number three, family. Yeah. Well, we just kind of rolled out a little bit of <laughs> that. But let's be honest. Like, you know, family is more fucked up than a soup sandwich. Really. Yeah. Family is just like the triggers of all the issues from literally the moment that you came into this world. And so many people are just pressured that they have to do certain things and it's really not their ideal holiday, right? So the pressure that, oh, you have to go see Miss, you know, uh, Aunt Sarah. I hate fucking Aunt Sarah. Aunt Sarah's got dementia and she's drooling on herself. She's not going to talk to me. And it's kind of like that you get pushed into these things, right? It's not going to be healthy. It's not going to be happy for you. It's going to be a really a letdown because the expectation now is if you do get a few days off during the holidays, what are you going to do with them? You're going to enjoy your time or you're going to be pressured and pushed into yes. going to see somebody that you don't even want to see. I had a friend about a couple months ago and she said, I can't wait to just get pregnant and have a baby. So I don't have, I have an, uh, an excuse not to leave my house and go outside the home for holidays. Mm, are you sucks. fucking kidding me? You're going to use an actual living human being as an excuse to say, I'm not going to leave the house because I have a newborn baby. Well, what are you going to do when the kid's 21 years old and that's not an excuse anymore? Mm-hmm. Like just step up, stop being fucking pussies, take the bull by the balls or the turkey by the neck or whatever you want to fucking say because this is a holiday show. And what's wrong with defining your holiday? Your holiday may be time off. I'm going to get something to eat eat with the people I, lo- I do love and I choose to be with, or I stay home and I'm in my robe with my husband, my wife, whatever, or by yourself. It's up to you. Why does all these people get stuck in this loop where it's almost a, I must go to do this even though I fucking want to jump off a building afterwards? Why do you think the suicide rate gets so high? Hello. Because you're pushed into all this fucking bullshit. Yes. Right? You're getting so angry, it's turning me on. Oh. And also, <laughs> once you said I'm in my robe, I just saw your ball bag hanging over <laughs> the couch. Because that's usually good, what I see when Matt's in his robe, just his ball robe. bag hanging over yeah. the couch. Oh, I, gotta let, I gotta air out the boys every now and then. The gonna, boys! The boys gotta get some Who let the boys up? Boo. Ooh, ooh. Okay. <laughs> but seriously, make your own traditions. No. Make your own traditions. Like no. for us, Thanksgiving, it's a fucking farce. The pilgrims and the Indians, the Native Americans, whatever the fuck you want to call them politically correct, they did not have a kumbaya time. No. Let's be honest. Read a book. Educate yourself. Jesus wasn't even born on Christmas Day. If you know anything about astrology and astronomy, the star that the friggin' three wise men saw that made them go, oh, Jesus is being born, wasn't even where it was supposed to be at that time. (laughs) Also, read a book. So (laughs) educate yourself, stop this bullshit malarkey, and create your own traditions because honestly, that is what being in bitches is all about. Saying no to things that do not serve your highest, greatest good. And if hanging out with your crazy fucking family Pork and beans <laughs> is something that doesn't make you happy. Yeah, don't, don't do it. Do it. Don't do it. Number four. Oh, this, this one is, just grinds my ass. This is a good one. Errands. Errands. Just running the errands. <laughs> I mean, thank God for Amazon, Jeff Bezos. I love you. I love you. Thank you for for what you did. But it's still a lot of errands. You're still gonna. Ro- hey, do you remember the time we were coming back? I forget where we were, and we were coming back from. I think we were coming back from Thanksgiving, and we had dinner out. We picked up Karina. We had a nice dinner. 
and we started coming back home and we were there was a walmart and there was like the zombie apocalypse they were running over the hills i guess they were giving away like a tv or something if you did such and such you did I do five, remember this. five jumping jacks a push up on one finger and then you could get a nickel yes. off and 10 cents off of this yes. and that and we're watching them just go over the hills and i'm like what the hell is going on it's absolutely insane people get trampled Chris is like people die. people die people die i mean it's insane did, was did your mom's fight over cabbage patch kids and my mom beat ass in toys r us mine was mine was the uh, star wars characters oh really oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and then my mom because she was so little she always got me the ugliest shittiest fucking cabbage patch kid because it was like the scraps <laughs> they put the hard ones on the top yeah the it shelf. was like the cabbage patch <laughs> baby preemie babies i'm like why do i want a premature cabbage patch child this is not fucking, I want the goddamn baby that looks like me. It was like American Girl dolls before there was American Girl dolls. But I do remember that it was Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. We were going out to dinner and the people were running up a hill. And I was like, I, it was like Walking Dead. Yeah. I was like, I'm Carl. Really well, it's, you Carl. know, it's like what we always talk about. That was a good image. That was good, right? right? Carl. <laughs> I was like going to be like Michonne. I was going to take my fucking machete out and just. You, you <laughs> have to. Well, but thank goodness we just drove around it. We didn't have the machete anymore. No, but they were running across the street. We almost hit them because they parked yeah. in another parking lot because that parking lot in Walmart, I don't know how, was full. It's crazy. Isn't that, that insane? Crazy. But it's really the opposite of living with intention. It's opposite of how we conduct our lives, right? To be able to be put into this loop thing of you have to do this. You have to buy these things. You have to spend this money. You have to do all these things. I mean, it's insanity. And, you know, we're very, very busy people. And to add 45 more errands on, I mean, we don't do Christmas. We uh, give all of the toys and fi financial right. stuff to the Home for Little Wanderers yes. every year. I mean, we pick up stuff for them. That's our I mean, Christmas. That's our Christmas. And that's it. And if we go on a vacation when we have time off, then it's actually really having a Christmas yes. where you can actually spend some time together. We usually actually go away during Christmas but we're not this year because I don't want to be jumping yeah I don't want to be yes. jumping time zone because I want to be ready for Kropalo and yes. my pajammy jammy jam um, <laughs> which doing. you guys see Matt's unicorn onesie <laughs> oh my god you have no guys, idea you gotta come and just buy tickets just to come see me in this thing it was really that ridiculous. thing has a little slit hole too just <laughs> throwing it out there <laughs> <laughs> number five all the fucking questions <laughs> you go over your family's house for you know christmas or thanksgiving or a gathering and then everyone's like when are you getting married when are you having a baby when are you when are you going back to school like mind your oh. mother fucking business yeah. mind your business like look at you asshole you're asking me when i'm going to do things and this is the best this is the best thing. People go, when are you going to have a baby, right? <laughs> and then they're the same people that say, you should never have a child. I fucking hate my kids. I'm like, oh, that makes it's me like really want to sign up for motherhood. Yeah. That was just a selling point. Thank you. You're a great salesman. <laughs> and thank God we live with our own intentions and do our own right? thinking. Because you get so many mixed messages like that. And you get interrogated, right? It's like, oh, you still have the karate school? It's like Guantanamo still... Bay. It's like, do you want a cock meat sandwich? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Harold and you know, Kumar. Like people ask me, oh, you still have the cry school? Still doing that, huh? I'm like, yeah, I motivate <laughs> teach people. What are you doing? I motivate thousands of people a week. What the hell are you doing with yourself? Right? It's like kind of like crazy, you know? It's no, kinda... people do the same thing to me. Like, no, no, no. When you, well, you should just like close your studio down and have a baby. I'm like, oh, I know. Because my, <laughs> my like body that. was just made to procreate. That was yeah. like the only thing I was putting and on I have earth the, to do. I have no ambition or passion no. <laughs> of anything. You but know. that's their like yeah. path and they think because their life is mediocre and that's all they've ever achieved in their lives that that you should just you know put down all your ambitions and passions mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know your journey and just be like i'm just gonna stay home and drive my children around yeah. and which is fine if that is like what makes you happy so don't fucking t email me and be like i'm i'm stay at home mom you're knocking me no i think it's fucking amazing yeah. if that's what you want to do and if you did it on your own recognizance not because someone else told you that that's what you should did and you fucking listen to them because you're a goddamn lemming so <laughs> And inappropriate appropriate questions, right? They'll ask you anything. But do you, like, don't how much did this cost, by the way? Oh. Anyways, did this cost? I'm over your house. What? How much does one of these go for? People do that to me all I'm the like, time. Uh, okay. It was free. Okay. It was free. I got it off the dump from the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad, isn't it? So little, true. Yeah, so and true. I think that it, what really it comes down to is people have like no social skills. Mm -hmm. So when you get in those like closed environments where you're all just like having a cup cup of egg 
eggnog and everyone's just staring at each other in a room and then they start asking these like fucking ridiculous questions. It's Ugh. almost because they don't know what else to say yes. or they don't know what else to ask. So then they just blurt out the most absurd shit. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. Yeah, no, it's... Uh yeah, I'm just getting, what do you call it? Uh, my skin's crown thinking about all no, these things. No, don't let your skin I'm crawl. I mean, I'm avoiding, I avoid it, but it brought back some memories of how I used to be in the loop of going to all these things. Matt has post-traumatic holiday disorder. I gotta just shake it off. Woo, it's all right, it's cool. <laughs> I shook it off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a little Reiki boost Reiki on the energy boost. here. <laughs> oh, well, that's our top five, and then oh, next great. week we're gonna talk about the next five, which are probably gonna get a little bit more deeper. <laughs> Be ready for next week. Let me tell you. Thank you for being crusaders for the ambitious movement. And like I always say, see you next Tuesday. Ow! <laughs>